Hey, welcome to the shop. Uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about this vice that I'm using um, because uh, it, what started off as a, a nice, simple vice that I enjoyed using and uh, when I started researching the vice uh, was when I received a second vice that's very similar to it, but instead of being made by Stanley as this and, and this one is, it was made by Champion out of Geneva, Ohio, and I realized the similarities in them uh, are so great that I was surprised that they both manufactured this vice. So at any rate, this happens to be a vice that I really enjoy using and it serves specific purposes that I want to get into and uh, let's talk about them. So here are the vices that I'm talking about, and I have three of them here. This is a Stanley version, this is a Stanley, and this is a champion out of Geneva, Ohio. So uh, first of all, let me show you why I love this vice. It's a very simple vice, actually. It's got a, uh, it's got a lead that goes through here that keeps it straight, and then it's got the screw thread that tightens it down here. So they're running parallel. And as you can see, the shape of the vise is an L shape, and that's so that it can fit onto a bench. So you can put it onto a bench or a sawhorse. You could put it onto a top of a sawhorse like that, which would create uh, two things. You could put a board in there and plane it on the sawhorse, or you could take a door and stand it up here at the end of the sawhorse, and that would help keep the door from pivoting as you plane it. A lot of uses. I believe, and one of the things that I love it for, is that when it sits on a bench, it creates a flat surface in here. As you can see here, if this is on a bench here, um, then you can run a board and it be supported on the bench, but be held in place by this vise here. I think it's a great idea, and I had always attributed it to a man named Christian Bodmer, who worked for Stanley. Now. That's where we sort of get into a complicated situation because, uh, and this I don't understand, Walter uh, Jacob did an article for the uh, Chronicle in the Early American Industries Association, the EIA, EAIA, and, um, and he did an article about Christian Bodmer and about all the different patents. He had a lot of patents, uh, spirit levels, bevels, butt gauges, zigzag, uh, rules that uh, ball lock in those all are attributed to him the 444 combination plane spurs um, uh, so so he was a prolific uh, designer for Stanley he was born in 1865 he went to work for Stanley in 1885 so he's only 20 years old when he goes to Stanley and and starts working for them and and he does a lot of different work but um this, this uh, uh, vice, which became the number 700 that I, I've got here, he patented that. He applied for the patent in 1927, and he was granted the patent in 1930. All fine and good. You would think that's great, a great invention. That's wonderful. But then I got the champion, and I started looking up the champion. And the champion patent was in 1917. So this was granted, this patent was granted to Champion much earlier, but not too much earlier that uh, Christian Bodmer wouldn't have known about it. So some more research needs to be done on who actually invented this style. Um, now, it could be that, uh, that Bodmer's patent had just enough differences that allowed it, it, allowed it to be uh, patented as a separate patent. But I... I I don't see a lot of differences. So let's first talk about the different uses that this uh, vice has or what I use it for. And then we'll get into looking at the, uh, the three different ones. This, this, by the way, is a Stanley and it's aluminum. And um, Champion also made not only this cast iron one, but an aluminum version. So all of that seems very strange to me. And I don't know who's copying who. Um, 
Maybe nobody was, but and I'm not trying to lay blame, but I think it would be an interesting study for somebody to make and to figure out who really is responsible for this concept and then for the uh, the designs later uh, and, and productions later. So let's get into the vices itself. So I've got these two attached to the bench. This is what I was using when we started the video. And this is one of the real reasons that I learned to love this vise. Now this is the Stanley 700 and it's a, it's a little different than the earlier one of the Stanley and the aluminum one. It's got this sort of solid cast body um, on each side. It's very sturdy and it's faced with two pieces of hardboard, uh, masonite to, uh, to some people that, uh, as a brand name. Um, and I use it for uh, predominantly this one for carving spoons because what it allows me to do is it allows me to lock in the spoon and have it against this table. So when I come in here to clear the bottom of it with a chisel, I can come in and uh, hit it with a gouge and clean up that edge without it uh, without it, it it moving against me. I don't have it very tight right now, but uh, it allows me that work and it allows me to work on the bench as a solid background rather than just in a vise where if I were pushing down, it might slip in the vise as it did a little bit there because it's, it's not quite flat over here. Normally I'd put a couple of wedges and things, but all of these I used this vise for on the table. And again, this one, here's a blank that I'm working on. And uh, so I find it very useful that the vise becomes flush with the tabletop of the bench top and allows you to apply a lot of force. So that's a great thing. Now, let me just take this out for a second so it's out of the way. And, um, and you see the reason I have a little block in here is because that's the shape of the handle. So uh, I could also do it just flat in the vise on the table and then the whole spoon is sitting all the way across. And again, I could get plenty of force in coming in here and hollowing out the bowl. So that's, uh, that's what I really like this vise for. If I were using one of my bench vices or something else, I would be clamping this way or this and, and not, and not uh, accomplishing a lot and it would move a lot on me. So this is an L shape here, as we said. So another thing that it can be used for is if you're working something like this and um, you want to uh, an odd shape, again, if you were cleaning out this with a chisel, um, which I'm not working on right now, and I just grabbed this out of the wood pile to show you, I could come in here with the chisel and work on this and I would have this as a stop to prevent this from moving on me. That's a great thing. In a normal vise where there's no support there, it could twist and you wouldn't get that good control that you'd want. So it works very well for that. It also gets large enough that you could put a, a larger piece in. Now this one here, I would probably just use in a regular vise and not worry about it if I'm planing. Um, but you see, this will get fairly wide and uh, let's see how wide it'll get. You know, I never really checked it, but it should probably do about four or five inches there. Um, you see, it just keeps getting wider and wider. And then this one I could use to plane or do whatever I wanted. Another good purpose for this vise, and I'm going to remove this one here so we can get a little closer on that uh, champion one. But here's, here's what this one looks like. Um, let's bring it up and I'll show it to you a little closer. Um... Here's the side of it, and uh, the hardboard is attached in here with bolts, so rather than going all the way through, and um, made in the USA, very substantial casting. Um, here's the original label on it, Stanley number 700. It's a hefty, it's a hefty vice. Now, supposedly, according to Walter Jacob, Stanley said to Bodmer, I want you to go out and I want you to design a vise that the average woodworker could carry with him and use on the job. This does not uh, uh, supply that end, but this is the newer version and it's quite heavy 
compared to the aluminum one and uh, compared to the lighter cast iron one that they made. So let's set this aside and I'll show you another use. I went ahead and uh, opened up that vise to see what the width on it is and it comes out to be a full four inch width there. Um, so you could put a four inch board in there very easily and that would work great. So that's the hefty vise. So this is not a Stanley vise, this is the Champion vise. And it's a little different. It has a, a place here for screws to go down and mount it into the bench. There's two holes there. You can see there are ribs here, which is similar to the Bodmer uh, uh, patent drawing. Uh, they also have these ribs because it's a cast piece and I guess trying to make it light enough, they didn't do a solid casting like that other one. But if you notice on this, there are two boards here. And this is another great thing about this vise is that you see, you can put one board coming down this way in this direction and one this way. And when you clamp this tight, it holds those two in place, this one and this one. So if you're doing a picture frame and you wanted to do a miter, this would be a great way to hold the two pieces together while you either tacked it, um, depending on how you did it, or glued it and you clamped it, but uh, it's because it's being held by this part here, up through here, and this part here. Now, on the uh, Stanley versions, and this may have been a, a big difference, is that you notice this is a longer span than this coming out here. It's not an L, it's more like a T. So that could have been the difference. I don't know. Um, would take a little study. But this is another great use for that clamp because this is on the, uh, on the bench and this is just hanging. So it's a great way to bring a miter together. Also, if you want to use it for a long board and you want to support it and plane it, you could put this on the edge another corner and that way you can hold this board as you plane out the surface the, of, the, of the board that way. So another, another good use for it. Now, uh, this one, as I say, is the champion, and it's a little different um, than, the, uh, than the Stanley. So I'm gonna bring this in a little bit more so you can see um, the difference here. And uh, let's see how I can do this so that you'd maybe see both. Um, of course, this is heavy cast iron, um, and it's got a thumb screw here instead of a, a T bolt where you twist it with a sliding rod. Um, I don't know uh, that any of that really makes such a big difference to it. And then here's the aluminum one. And, uh, and again, it's an L shape, same as this Stanley here. Um, and this number is a number 6702, uh, which is also listed in the, uh, in the catalogs. And uh, it's just listed as a workbench vise. That's all it is. But I think it should have another name because I think it serves a, a greater purpose. You know, I think it's really interesting, the history of tools. Obviously, I get into it because uh, I do woodworking, but also... Uh, also, when you start investigating the past of these things and who designed them, it's kind of fascinating the stories that go along with them. Um, there's uh, quite a few stories of uh, corporate espionage where people have stolen designs from other people. And I'm not saying that happened here, but uh, all of that stuff to read about it in the past is kind of fun, like a good mystery novel. You, you learn new things. Um, so here are the three that I have. This is that heavy Stanley. And there's no way to screw it to the bench, but it's a good hefty uh, casting. It works, uh, it works very, very well. There's very little pivot to it and everything. Nice weight, good, good, good vice. And uh, very simple to add to your bench and, uh, and then go on from there. This is the aluminum version. And the aluminum version has some interesting things, whereas that hardboard was bolted into this casting. This just gives you holes for you to put whatever board you want in between here to face the two plates. 
Um, and, and there are holes on this side. The, the strange thing, and I don't know why, but this side here has uh, two holes, two holes, two holes. And it might be that a previous owner drilled these other holes for some reason. I don't know what, but uh, that could be. It. But this is a very lightweight version. And uh, again, we'll clamp on the, on the bench or on the sawhorse and work very well. Uh, this one did not accommodate any holes this way to put this part onto the bench, which is different, again, from the Champion. The Champion is a heavy cast iron. It gives you two holes here that are countersunk for you to apply this portion to a bench to make it a bit more permanent if you want it which these don't have. It has this T-shape rather than, uh, rather than the, the L. Um, it's got its uh, champion name here, the patent applied for. This is an early one. So this is before the patent was accepted, but the patent was accepted in 1917. Um, and it has the holes on the sides for the cheeks so that you could apply a board. Another difference is that there are no holes to apply the cheeks this way. But if you made the cheek in an L shape, this would float and that would work out fine. There's no real reason for it. But, um, but it is just one more difference in them. And those differences could accommodate the patent office accepting Bodmer's patent 12 or 15, 17 years later. So it's interesting to learn about these tools. It's great joy to use them still. They all work well. A little lighter weight, nice heavy duty, a little rickety, but um, still heavy duty and will hold everything tight. So they're fun. I like them, and uh, I know I don't need three, but, uh, but uh, I know I'll wind up keeping one just for my spoons because I use that all the time. So there you have it. I hope uh, you enjoyed this little short video on these vices. And, uh, and if you see one, grab it and try it out and let me know. I think, you'll, uh, I think you'll really find a lot of uses for them. And uh, other than that, I want you guys to take care of yourselves. And uh, we'll see you soon again.